we really want to get to know a little bit more about how you've done everything you've done. And I recently learned that you started both of these companies, Nplug and Nanalee Biosciences, in college. And so for me, as a college student who's comparatively twiddling, twiddling his thumbs, you know. Um, I don't think you're doing that. <laughs> I'd love to know a little bit about how you did that and, and kind of what you saw as being instrumental in making that possible. Absolutely. So I think the secret has always been about working with brilliant people. And in fact, I think the title for this talk should probably be like running two companies, Emmy, and how to be lazy and play lots of video games, because that's what actually happens. So I came here with my family. We were immigrants. We didn't have any money. And so growing up, if I needed to make anything happen or if I wanted something, I had to figure it out myself. And I think that's where I learned the secret is if I just work with really, really smart people that are smarter than me, then that's really helpful. Uh, and so when I was at Berkeley, that's very much what I did. And it's really easy to be surrounded with brilliant people at Berkeley. You know, you are literally with tons of PhDs, Nobel Prize winning professors here. And so that's pretty easy. One of the quotes that I always liked was, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. When I tell people, people that, they're like, oh, I need to change friends. <laughs> and so I made sure that I was surrounded with, with great friends, and I made my intention really clear. I would tell my friends while I was at school that I'd like to build things. I like working on projects, and I want to meet smart people. And so I would be on the lookout for really smart people. And so this happened when it was winter break uh, in Colorado, back home where I uh, had family. And uh, it was at a bar. I'm sitting there with my friends. And then my friend points out a guy uh, on the other side of the room and is like, oh, that guy's a genius. And I was like, oh, I want to meet a genius. Yeah, uh, go tell that guy I want to talk to him. So my friend does this. And this guy comes over. His name is Balaji Shridhar. And he has, you know, the, the typical genius things like graduate from MIT, PhD, MD, et cetera. And I was like, all right, you're a pretty smart guy. And uh, that night, midnight at a bar, I was learning about what he was doing for his PhD, that he discovered this really interesting polymer. And I said, right then and there, we're going to start a company. We're going to take this polymer of yours, and we're going to enable vaccines to survive without refrigeration. And so we started Nanalee Bioscience that night at the bar. <laughs> and so next time you're at the bar, you could be like, hey, I'm just meeting my co-founder here. <laughs> and the, I, I distinctly remember even my senior year, I was serving as the CEO. And, uh, you know, senior year, you're supposed to have some fun. Uh, I was uh, at my sorority, Gamma Phi Beta, and on Friday nights, I would be taking shots with my sorority sister while applying for grants. So, you know, another secret I think is multitasking. I think I'm pretty good at multitasking. And, and the story for Implug was kind of the same. I had a uh, internship my junior year and a fellow intern was like, you know, you should meet this guy named David Zhu. He's looking for a co-founder and CEO for this company idea that he has. So I'm like, okay. Let's, uh, let's meet. So I talked to David for about 45 minutes. And by the end of it, I was like, OK, let's start Implug. Let's build the next generation digital display software. Let's make all the screens and hotel shopping malls interactive. I'll do it. And this is the week of graduation. And, and literally a few days later, I took a U-Haul down with my very few stuff uh, to LA to start Implug. So I think for both of these, uh, the, I guess the takeaway is I met really, really smart people, and when I meet them, I'm super aggressive and going after them. I have no shame, and I say, we're going to work together, and I convince them to work with me. And I think another part of it is, you know, I meet people with a lot of ideas, and I actually think most ideas are really good, but I'm, I'm not the ideas person. I'm like the... I'll execute on it. You tell me the idea, I'll make it happen. And so that kind of combination really helped in being able to do two companies. Absolutely. So for someone who wants to execute, my takeaways are, if you want to start a company, head straight to the nearest bar. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, maybe change your friends. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think you have pretty good friends. I would hope so. I would hope so. Um, but <laughs> along that line, 
Um, you know, your friends and, you know, all, taking all this initiative has gotten you to a pretty amazing place, right? You have these two companies that you run, both doing very well. Um, and then there's the Emmy, you know? So as I sit here thinking, you know, what's the common thread between all of this? Can you talk a little bit about what got you into producing television, like how you got interested in television as an industry in the first place, and then, you know, how did you kind of break into that with what seems like, you know, no prior experience? Sure. Uh, so the TV show I produce is called The Bay. It's on Amazon, and uh, it comes free with your Amazon Prime subscription. Uh, <laughs> So when I, no was, <laughs> when I was growing up in Colorado, I always had a dream of going to Hollywood. You're in landlocked Colorado. I'd never been to the beach, and so seeing the glamour on TV of, of Los Angeles and Hollywood was always exciting. So when I moved to L.A. to start Implug, one of the things I did on the weekends is I would go to networking events that had people in entertainment, and I would go to these, like, indie, these free indie film screenings in the hopes of meeting a director. So at one of these film screenings, the director was there. I liked the movie, and right after, the screening, I went up to him, his name is Gregory Martin, and I said, I want to help you on your next movie project. And he thought about it, he was like, okay, sure. And so, on the weekends, <laughs> there's a, a couple more sentences in between. <laughs> just a <laughs> the, few. The details, few. right? <laughs> and so, I volunteered, I helped get a couple of actors involved, I helped him get some funding, and uh, we worked on it for about a year, but it never really got anywhere. We had all these like bumps in the road, and so it never got finished. And uh, we actually lost touch for a few years. And then about four years after that, uh, I ran into him at a networking event. Uh, you know, actually, here's a little secret. Cameras are off, right? So Gregory doesn't even know this, but I didn't accidentally run into him at the networking event. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew he was gonna be at this networking event, is, is the full truth, and I wanted to talk to him because I heard that he was working on this cool new TV show and I wanted to be involved. Uh, so sure enough, he's there, he remembers me, and he's like, hey, I'm working on a TV show. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> and he's like, do you wanna help out on this? And I said, let me think about it, uh, sure. <laughs> and even though we had worked on that movie project and it didn't go anywhere, I still believed in him as a person. I still thought he was so talented. And so I was okay taking that second chance and working with him again. And that year, we swept the Emmys. Well, I wish everything that I tried randomly turned out like that. No, but... But honestly, I, I think the most amazing thing about that story is, you know, there's that saying, like, you make your own luck, right? And I think that, that totally exemplifies that, right? Because you went out there, you knew exactly where he was going to be, and you, you went for it because you wanted to get involved, and that's awesome. And I think, you know, once you make that opportunity happen, um, the next step is obviously following through. So then you had that learning curve, right, of figuring out how to actually produce a TV show, which I assume was new. Um, so for anybody who's trying to follow in your footsteps, take a page out of your book, what advice do you have for them in terms of how to get up to speed or how to learn about something that's a little bit foreign to them? Yeah, I think the learning curve is really steep no matter what it is, but I think if you have your skill sets that you know you're good at and you hone those strengths of yours, you find people that complement your skill set, and then you can get so much more done in a short amount of time. So I always think, you know, it's not about how many hours that you're spending on something. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to learn it faster. It's really being able to be uh, thoughtful about how you're practicing or learning that. So even though after only a few years, I was able to become, uh, you know, really knowledgeable about digital display software and polymers. Uh, things I didn't think as a five-year-old that's what I'd be doing, but hey. <laughs> but, you know, I know that no matter how many hours I spend playing video games, by the way, I play a lot of Overwatch, Mercy, Main, for anybody, any video gamers out there. Uh, I know how many, no matter how many hours I put in that, I'm just never going to get that good. <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, but there are certain things like 
you know, with piano that maybe you do have to put a lot of hours in. And so, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I had uh, performed piano at a TEDx. And in order to do that, it was like 12 years of piano lessons, at least an hour of practice every day. And so depending on what it is, some things take longer, some things take a short amount of time. And when it comes to business, as long as you know those core skill sets, am I making money? Is my product working? Do my customers like the product? Am I making sales? Then it makes it so much easier to learn a new industry and a new business. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. I think, it, as you said, you know, it's about finding those commonalities and, and working on those skills rather than seeing everything as separate is kind of the big thing. Um, and kind of a, a bit of a tangent here, but while I was talking to a number of different students and, you know, mentioning that you were coming to come speak, um, a lot of them were really excited because um, they'd heard that you used to be part of student government here at Berkeley, which is, you know, obviously a very huge part of why everything runs and you know what happens on campus. Um, so with everything that's going on right now, is that something that you still kind of integrate into your life, or is it mostly just focus on you know, business, passion projects, social, et cetera? Yeah, I definitely still try to get as involved in the community as possible, and I try to engage our team and all that, because I think uh, part of that comes to being having that balance. You have your work, you have your involvement in the community, you have the things that you enjoy doing for fun. Uh, so, for example, one of the things uh, that I think is really important is you involve your teammates and the people around you in having that fun and that involvement. Uh, so later this year uh, at Implug, we're taking all of our employees, their, their spouses and partners to Mexico for all expense paid vacation. Uh, so by the way, if you like Cabo, uh, Implug is hiring, uh, www.implug.com. <laughs> and that's one of the things that I think is important too, is just keeping that involvement. So in the community, uh, I was elected to the Mar Vista Community Council, in, uh, which is a neighborhood in LA. And being part of student government back when I was at Cal has been really helpful in understanding how to work uh, with local government. And I think it always still brings me back to when I first came to the US with my parents. Uh, they worked multiple jobs, they struggled. We always had a lot of community organization and community support. And so I knew that when I was going to do business or start anything, I wanted to make sure that I was always giving back. I, I think it's our responsibility as leaders that we're not just leading that organization that we're in, but we're lifting people at our organization and lifting the people in our community and beyond. And so that's something that I really uh, strongly believe in. And coming back to Berkeley, you know, part of sharing the stories, I hope that I can inspire people to recognize, like, you know, you don't need to know and be an expert at certain things to pursue it. Like, I had no idea about digital signage, I had no idea about polymers or TV shows, uh, but I just went for it. There's, it wasn't like any kind of magic or secret sauce, it was just I went, talked to the people and said, I want to work on this, and I hope that gives people the motivation and understanding that it's pretty easy. Just go up there, talk to the person, say you want to work on something, uh, and, and get it done. So if Sheryl Sandberg's is lean in, mine is dive in. Just go for it. If you have certain goals you want, don't be afraid and just dive into it and make sure every step along the way that you're helping people around you and getting your uh, community involved. That's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Nancy. I think we're running Thanks out of time.